You're listening to the FYI podcast where we talk about young adult team, theology, faith and life, finances, future, friendships. And this month, we're in a mini series called Great at Work. I'm Josiah Keneally. And I'm Mike Keneally. Happy Friday, friends. And we are in an amazing series, but this month's episodes are brought to you by our friends at GFA, right? GFA World. And they are reaching the nations for Jesus. And what they essentially do is they take three to six months for individuals who feel called to missions and ministry and teach them for free how to do ministry, how to pray, how to fast, how to essentially just become a missionary become a missionary to change the world around them so it is a paid apprenticeship and it offers three to six months programs so if you're interested they're located in texas check out the show notes if that interests you at all and we met some of their team and they're doing awesome things for the kingdom of god so if you are young and want to go on an adventure that could be one right up your alley. And calling all young adults. Ooh, here we go. May 17th through 19th for all 18 to 30 year olds, mm-hmm. all of their leaders, young adult ministries. You've got to get to Minnesota. Yeah. Alexandria, Minnesota at Lake Geneva Christian Center. This is a camp for young adults. It's an entire weekend called the YA Weekend. Hundreds of young adults lifting up the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. going after God, growing in community. Right. You don't know the breakthrough that God may have for you. Mark Batterson says a change of place and a change of pace can lead to a change of perspective. Let's do both. Let's go after God. We'll see you this May. You can visit Mm youngadults.today slash the dash WKND $10 off with the promo code podcast on registration. Again, if you sign up for the weekend, $10 off by using the promo code podcast, and we can't wait to see you. Next month, and the last thing that we just wanted to do is Aria just left a review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to all of our listeners and those who stream on YouTube as well. But please check out what Aria had to say about this show. Where is your her again? My bad. Not Aria. We had Aria. Slightly competitive. Where are they at? There they are. Here we, oh, here we go. So much wisdom. Five stars. This is a great podcast. There is so much value and wisdom. It will definitely help you grow in your faith as well as provide very practical life tools. And that is actually our heart and our, uh, like our heart's desire for you as young adults to be able to come and ask questions that maybe you feel like you have nobody else to ask them to. And I'm not saying that we have all the answers. And if we don't, we'll hopefully point you in the right direction and unpack some of those. And we always want to come back to scripture. True wisdom comes from scripture and it comes in prayer through the word of God. So thank you so much for leaving us that amazing review. Last week was Arya and she gave us like 10 or 1,000 stars out of 10. So we'll take that as well. So if you want to rate, review, subscribe, share this with your friends around the globe or around your neighborhood or maybe around your dorm, we want to encourage you to do that. And hopefully you guys can send some more questions our way. And babe, kick it to kind of a series recap. Where have we been? Where are we going? Yeah. Great at work is the mini yes. series. So we've FYI. been focusing great at work. Like how do we truly do great things as we work for the Lord and work as though we're working for the Lord. So the first week we unpacked the question, where are the great leaders? And we left you with a reflective question of what kind of leader are you becoming and what kind of leader are you currently following? And then this last week we talked about, what was it, Josiah? Building a network. Building a network. Before you need it, having some mentors, advisors, and growing your world because the Christian faith is not meant to be lived alone today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be just talking about how to pursue excellence and glorify God in no matter what our hands find us doing. Mm -hmm. And um, to do that, Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though working for God, not working for man. And this is the case for all of us, Mm -hmm. no matter what school you're going to, no matter what company you're working for, no matter what ministry you're a part of, at the end of the day, Jesus is Mm -hmm. the one that we're glorifying. And when we bring excellence, notice it says excellence and not perfection, right? What we're not trying to do is say, shame on you. You need to try harder. It's just saying like, look, are you, are we giving it our best shot? Mm -hmm. I love the quote from A.W. Tozer along these lines that 
even to to kind of debunk the whole like what is calling mm -hmm. concept right because so many young adults that I talk to or pray with they're like trying to figure out my purpose in life I just don't know what God's calling me to do mm -hmm. and I want to set somebody free by just sharing Colossians 3 23 because God's will is whatever your hands find you to do and along those lines, A.W. Tozer said this. He said, it's not what a person does that determines if their work is sacred or secular, but it's the motive why they do what they do. That's great. Wow. I'm reflecting on that. That's why it's silent. I mean, it's powerful. It is powerful. I, I can let it, let, let it breathe for a second. Yeah. And I think that's just an encouraging word. Just to kind of reflect on them, who who are you? Who do you want to become? And who are you becoming in the process of no matter where you find yourself between the ages of 18, 30 and beyond? And I think when you begin with the end in mind, I think one thing that we can all agree on is we do want to honor and glorify God. We all want to hear when we get to heaven, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. Servant means that we took our time, we honored it, we took our treasures that God has given us and we took our talent and we did it all in the name and for the name of Jesus, not for the name of Micah, not for the name of Josiah. Because when we do that, we're robbing God of the glory. And when we find ourselves wanting a pat on the back and doing it for our own selfish ambitions and our own selfish desires, we start building our own kingdom and not God's kingdom in the process. Oh my gosh. So... How do we get to that point? I think it comes back to what you said, pure heart and pure motives. Mm. So give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, Lord. That'd be my prayer for this episode. As Lord is give us clean hands and pure hearts for whatever our hands touch, may it truly be honoring and pleasing and glorifying to you. And we, we always pray like, Lord, what do you, what do you, I would say one thing, what do you already have in your hands that God has given you? And how are you stewarding that big or small thing, because the word of God says, if he can't trust you with a little, he's not going to be able to trust you with a lot, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. It could be your influence. It could be finances. Maybe you're in, you don't know how to save money. You're just spend, spend, spending and your paycheck is spent even before it's in your bank account for the next month. So just really looking at what is in your hands and how can I begin to steward it better? I don't know what that better means for the listener today. It could be time. Maybe you're not learning how to manage and steward your time. And I will say what I've learned, if we don't manage our calendar, somebody else will. It's so true. If we don't have a calendar, you're going to wander aimlessly and it's wonder, so wow, I'm 30 years old. Where did that time go? Uh-huh. Somebody else hijacked it or you willingly handed it over one of the two. So I would even say, what are your, I would look at your rhythms, your daily rhythms and routines are a reflection of how you are stewarding and glorifying God in the process of what he's already given you. So I would say, look at your daily rhythms and routines. That is essentially looking at what does my Monday to Friday look like for school, for work, commitments, whatever. And that is from workouts to what you're filling your body with mind, body, and soul. What are you watching? What are you eating? Are you exercising? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you resting? Are you honoring the time of your people that are employing you? Are you honoring the classes that you are paying for? And if you haven't paid for them, you will get that big check, not that check. You will get that big bill at the end of your schooling. And you'll wonder, oh my gosh. I, I don't know if I utilized everything I did or should have when I was sleeping in till noon every day and going to bed at 6 a.m. playing video games. I don't know what your thing that God's asking you to steward well, but I think if we can understand the concept of stewardship is taking what God has given you, offering it back to him, asking him to come into the process, your calendar, your day, your work, your art, your numbers, whatever you're putting your hands to and asking him into that journey and stewarding what he's been giving you. It can be big. It can be small. It doesn't matter. It does matter, but it doesn't matter because he wants to bless it. So it's a condition of the heart. So totally. I would just say, even just setting that as a baseline, like stewardship, 
because we begin to understand stewardship, we will want to glorify God. Look, God, you let me be a part of this. Holy smokes, God, like this person came into my life. That's a blessing. How in the world did I get onto this campus? It was through somebody else's sacrificial giving of the scholarship fund that I qualified for. Now, am I stewarding that free scholarship or that mm-hmm. number amount of scholarship? Mm-hmm. And is in, do you view it as an honor or a privilege? So I think some of the things we can kind of, I don't want to say it's the scales and balances, but when you're like, oh, I'm honored to be here versus it's a privilege. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we can look at that. It's not a right. Yeah. yeah. So I think when you can it's good. wrestle some, I mean, I don't know the younger version of me, I think I had, I should have wrestled some things down to the ground a little harder or had somebody call it out in me. So I'm like, oh, not everybody has these opportunities, you know, just so taking some time to reflect on what is already in your hands. Oh man. And I want to tell somebody today about this, like, Stop trying to blend in when God has called you to stand out. That's good. Bottom line, like we're not just to blend in. As Christ followers, we're the salt, we're the light. Mm -hmm. And we've got to shine bright. Like we cannot just wander aimlessly, try to blend in, try to hide under the radar when God has absolutely asked us to stand out, to shine for him. And that's the idea of even Mm -hmm. like... How do we stand out? One of our, one of my late mentors, he's since gone to be with Jesus, but a a pastor and a friend of mine by the name of Roger Lane, Mm. he had with me, he shared during our coaching sessions, four rules that he called four rules for success in life and leadership. And I thought it'd be powerful to share them today. The first is to be on time, always be on time. And on time means early. Early. That's right. That's right. So the first one's be on time. The second is to do what you say you're going to do. Be a person of your word. The third is to finish what you start. Mm -hmm. And the last one is to say please and thank you. Those were Roger Lane's four rules of success for life and leadership. But you think about how do you stand out at work if you will show up on time? If you will say please and thank you, if you do what you say you're going to do and you finish the projects you start, that's excellence. That's glorifying God. Notice you don't have to work at a church to do that. You can glorify God as a dishwasher like Brother Lawrence was. And, you know, I, I also am careful because I don't want us to just think that it's grandiose and it's we've got to do something massive for God's kingdom when a lot of life is actually pretty mundane. Mm -hmm. And I would argue there's some miracles in the mundane. And Zechariah 4.10 talks about don't despise the day of small beginnings. Like you were just talking about like steward what God's placed in your hand, your head, your heart, be faithful with what God's given you. It's probably a little bit. Mm -hmm. We start out small, but we've got to start somewhere. And somewhere is significant. So small isn't insignificant. Small is something, it's somewhere, it's starting. Mm -hmm. And talk about the idea of greatness can be found in a garage. Oh man. Well, if you study anything, if you're in the business world, a lot of great businesses actually started with the access of them only having a garage. Like uh, Walt Disney started in a garage. Greatness. And then look where Disneyland, Disney World, all the products, Disney, I'm sure if you are a subscriber like we are because we have young daughters, like just the creativity that has come through, like he has imagination an imagination that truly changed and transformed the world in which we see. Absolutely. And animation. He did not, if you've ever seen the movie, I don't know how close it is to his real life, but just the grittiness of which he had, the the scrappiness, the barely getting by, the reimagining of his characters that he wrote that they really didn't like, um, the name of the the mouse right away, the way that he looked. And I think it's in a portrayed in a movie called Walt Before Mickey. Yeah, probably. So, I mean, I just think of Disney. I think yes. of um, Craig Rochelle, Life Church. He was teaching and preaching in his garage. Now it's the largest church in America. Yes. I and, think they're above 35 campuses. But I think that's a demonstration of faithfulness. Like he knew in his heart of hearts that God had given him the gift of teaching and preaching. And 
you have to start somewhere. Well, and here's the thing: like we see him now and be like, "Oh, he's awesome! Like he's the coach that you want to like rally around and blah blah." blah. But if you were to see his life, you know, portrayed backwards Mm -hmm. from where he is to where he started, he started at small, humble beginnings with what he had in his hand. Yeah, and I think he would probably tell you the same thing. I've been in a room with him twice in the past two or three years. And one of them about a year ago, he was sharing about preaching at an event called the Speak Conference hosted at Passion City Church. And with tears in his eyes, he talked about within the past couple of years, he thought about quitting. Mm-hmm. He thought about giving up and just doing real estate quietly. Right. And so just because something pops or takes off, mm-hmm or succeeds in the world's eyes. That doesn't mean you won't feel like quitting some days or feel like giving up or that it's all sunshine and rainbows. And, you know, like there's, there's ups and downs, peaks and valleys in all of our narratives. Yeah. I mean, along with it, one of the people we really admire is Dave Ramsey. And I think I've seen a picture of a card table Mm -hmm. that he, with a microphone like I mean, retro more than this, but a card table and I think two two um, folding like chairs, chairs mm-hmm. started what's now one of the largest businesses in Tennessee. One of the I think top, it's one of the top podcasts, isn't yeah, it? Oh, the no, number no. one podcast yeah. in the Dave Ramsey Show. The Globe is the oh. Dave Ramsey Show, and Amazon, Apple. These companies were all started in a garage, and so can greatness even start in a garage? You bet. You can even start in a one. dorm room. Bingo. Hello. Bingo. And the it's it's not about the location as much as it is. Again, to quote Roger Lane, one time he prayed with me and told me, Josiah, God is more concerned with your availability to him mm-hmm. than your skills and abilities. That's good. And I just go, is there greatness in a garage? You bet if you're there, because God has created you as his masterpiece, created in God's image mm-hmm. to do good works that God great works that God prepared in advance for you to do. So greatness is in you Mm -hmm. because of the spirit of the living God, that resurrection power that we're talking about this Easter Mm timeframe, that same power that rose Christ from the dead through and imparted by the Holy spirit lives in you. So there's greatness in you Mm -hmm. more so than anything that you could do is who God's made you to be. Yeah. So I would encourage you start praying that God would unleash that greatness in you. I think the only thing holding you back might be you. It might be the excuse. It might be a lack of stewardship right now. But if you discipline yourself enough to do what God's called you to do and offer it back to him and glorify him in the process, oh man, it's you're unstoppable. When you team up with God, Like there are elements and dynamics and doors that he will open that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. Like, there is greatness in you and it's waiting to be unleashed. Don't allow that potential to die within you. Wow. Allow it to be unleashed. But in the process of the unleashing comes the taming. So if there's any part of you or your spirit that needs to be tamed, make sure you're taking it back to prayer, back to God and offering him your calendar and inviting him into the process each and every single day. Because the moment we stop doing that, that's when we start building our own kingdom and not God's. So is it excellence? Yes. Is it perfection? No, your best Mm -hmm. is all God's asking. This is the FYI podcast.